Hello everyone, my name is Matt, and welcome to the tutorial on Universal Fighting Engine, otherwise known as UFE, and how to ready a 2D character for your game. This tutorial assumes you already have the sprites ready for your animations, and you have installed and set up UFE into your Unity game project before beginning. UFE 2 introduces a new editor window called the Hitbox Editor window. You can access this window by going to Window, UFE, Hitbox Editor. But before we can use it, we need to set up our 2D character. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to set up your 2D character's idle state by using the Hitbox Editor. Now, I have each of the frames of my new character's idle state here. But we need to make sure it's imported correctly first. The character's root position, or ground positioning, of the sprite is based off the sprite's pivot point. This can be set in the import settings at any time, but all sprites of an animation have to have their pivot points set correctly. You can change the pivot point location inside the import settings, underneath the sprite mode, pivot. And you have a various predefined options available to you. I'm going to need to custom specifically for my sprite, which I can do in the sprite editor. And you can see the sprite pivot point right here is a blue circle. I'm going to need to lower this value so that way it knows where his ground position is located. Apply it. And I actually need to do that for all the sprites. Keep in mind that the pixels per unit value will change your default render size and scale of your sprite when in the world space. For the sake of my character, I know that he should be 50 pixels per unit. You might have to use trial and error, but it isn't a difficult thing to update. You could even make changes live if you prefer. Next, we can begin creating the character by dragging any of his sprites into the hierarchy world space. I recommend using the first idle frame, as it will make it easier when the character is loaded cold by the system later. Feel free to name him however you want the prefab to be and make sure that that world transform position is 0, 0, 0. Now that the character is in the world space, we need to add the necessary components, animator and hitbox script. Starting with the animator, make sure the animator controller is set to the default value of UFE for the MC underscore controller value, and then add the hitbox script. From here, save the character as a prefab. I'll be putting it into my resources folder. Now, open up Unity's animation window as we need to create the idle animation file. You can do that by going to Window, Animation, Animation. Put that window wherever you like. And you can see it's currently set to, the, to my character that we created. So go ahead and hit the drop down, go to create new clip, store it where you want the new clip to be stored. In this case, we're making the idle animation. So I'm just gonna put send out idle for that. And you can see right now, we have a blank canvas here. Next, we need to make sure our character is selected in the hierarchy. So that way the animator recognizes them. You'll see it not grayed out. And then we just have to drag, click and drag all the sprites. They're numbered in sequential order already. You can move them all into the timeline. This will automatically make the animation window set each individual sprite one keyframe after the next. You can even preview it here in the window by selecting preview and play. And he's moving a little fast for me, so I'm just going to actually lower the samples rate. The lower the number, the slower he becomes, and you will evenly space out the frames. In this case, it's almost like a frames per second. Let's see him at 30 frames. It's moving still a little too fast for me, so I'm just going to change it to 25 frames. And that should be more like what I would like. Yeah, that's looking fine. That automatically saves to the auto animation file. So now that we have the animation file, we can complete our animation and finally begin adding hitboxes to the animation itself. 
So in this case, we should be able to say we should be able to delete Sendo from the hierarchy. We need to create a uh, I still have to create a hitbox editor file. And you can create the custom hitbox map either by selecting create new UFE animator file, or you can right-click the direction you the folder you want it to create it into, select create, UFE, custom hitboxes. And that will create a custom hitbox asset file. The first thing you need to do once you have your hitbox file is import the animation that you want to create hitboxes for. In this case, it's the idle we just created. And we're going to need to move in the character prefab so we can preview the character with that animation. Now that we, both are set, we can turn the preview on. And we can see that he's animating with the animation file as we gave it. You can also zoom in or out. With the, with the magnifying glass, so that way you can see the whole timeline. Now we need to create our first hitbox type. So select Add Hitbox. The shape to the left of the name is to tell you if it's a sphere or a rectangle. You can also rename the hitbox by right-clicking and selecting Rename. Context menu itself is also where you'll be able to change the lead properties of the hitbox, such as type, hit level, shape, etc. In this case, I want to be using rectangles, and this is going to be collision type of throw collider. Once the hitbox has been set, though, we can use the timeline to set the active frames of the hitbox, or in other words, when it should render the hitbox during the animation. Right clicking will bring up the context menu, and there we can create the new active window and modify to our pleasure. Since this is going to be available on all frames of the animation, I'm going to click and drag it to the beginning and end of the entire animation. I started with the throw collider because we want to make the character able to be thrown should the opponent attempt to do so. You can right click the active render frames, hit edit, and then there you can adjust the position of the hitbox as well as the width and height or radius if it's a sphere location and it'll be linked based off of the root bone or the pivot point of the sprite. Now I know I already know my values that I need so I'm just going to do a quick edit here. In general though the throw collider will normally follow the body collider as it's the character's physical space so I'm going to copy and paste the throw collider hitbox and just set it to be a body collider just to save some time. and then update it to be a body collider because it's going to be in the same exact location as the throw collider. Next, we need to add the hitboxes or the hit colliders. So if the player registers a hurt box over top of it, they'll be going into hit, hit animation. So let's start first with the, uh, with the head hitbox. And just to save, uh, be a little more clarified, I'm going to rename it. So it's hit hitbox. Create the new frame. Then we're going to add a new hitbox, another hitbox for the lower body, or the torso in this case. Since the character is a boxer, he's not going to have any lower body hitboxes. Now, if you notice though, our character does a little bit of moving during the animation as he's bobbing up and down in the idle state. So I'm going to try lining it up better by making a second active window for each hit collider and adjusting it. This is really the big benefit of the new custom hitbox feature, as you get full control over where and when your hitboxes render in your animations. So I'm going to start by copying the already additional existing head hitbox, pasting it, I'm going to set it to the timeline so the rest of the animation plays that hitbox. Because this is the idle state, it's going to have 
um, always going to have these hitboxes out there. And do the same thing for my uh, torso box. And I'm going to rename the hit box here, the hit box here to become be a little more clear, clarified as uh, the torso hit box. Now we have completed our custom hitbox map, and we can proceed with implementing our 2D character. By doing that, open up the character editor window, select the character that we're going to character file asset relative to this character. So we make sure that we're re rendering the, the correct character asset file. Go ahead and fill out the basic information we need, such as their name, their HUD icon and character select icon. as well as their versus screen portrait. At this point, we can also get rid of the character from the prefab by selecting preview off in the hitbox editor. Grab our prefab of the character, import them into the character asset file underneath the character prefabs area. Then go to the move sets area Inside move sets, make sure you select Mechanim 2D. And the animation control is set to UFE engine. Now here you have two options for stances. You can either use the inside character asset stance, or you can use a file of the stance um, and reference it later through the resources folder for faster loading. In this case, I'm just going to show off, uh, I'm, just, I'm just looking to get the idle state, so I'm just going to do new stance here. And under basic moves, We'll see enabled moves. Since I'm only doing idle right now, we don't need any of these checked. Just to tell the system that don't, don't expect that any of these work. And in the idle state, you'll see default clip. Since we are using a custom hitbox map, we want to make sure we tell the system to expect it instead of an auto map. So click the drop down, select custom, and then click and drag the hitbox map we created. And now that our character is all set up, we can utilize our global debug options to boot right into the match by click and dragging the character we added into the player one slot or player two slot and then playing. So here we can see our newly created character running in UFE. And from here, you'll just need to create the additional animations and hitboxes then add them to your character's moveset to flesh your own unique characters out. And if you have any further questions, please reach out on the UFE forums linked in the description below. There, you can also keep up to date with new tutorial videos. Thanks for watching.